All right, everyone, good morning, good afternoon, depending on what part of the country you are in. Uh, welcome to the monthly uh, channel webinar from Campango. Today, we're gonna recap the info and insights from Channel Connect 2019. Uh, so whether you're able to uh, join uh, at Channel Connect or not, we're just gonna re recap some of the highlights uh, from the week, uh, specifically focusing in on uh, Campango's involvement and some of the key takeaways from that. Uh, I just want to introduce myself real quick. My name is Jared Tun. I'm an associate channel manager at Campango. Uh, and I, I closely work with a couple other folks here with the channel. Some of you may know Scott Bickley, who is uh, uh, heavily invested uh, with the IntelliSys ecosystem as well. Uh, and today what we're going to do is just cover uh, some of the highlights of Channel Connect, uh, which will, for Campango's portion, really focused in on CX readiness, uh, how Salesforce plays into that, and identifying CRM needs for your customers. A few housekeeping items real quick. Uh, there is a chat and Q&A function uh, with the Zoom meeting. So at any point, if you do have a question, uh, please feel free to type it in there. Uh, if we don't get to it right away, we will make sure that we leave a few minutes at the end for uh, some Q&A. Uh, the webinar will be recorded. Uh, so if you have to hop out early, hopefully not, um, or uh, if you have anyone that missed it that wants to see it, uh, we will be posting that um, both on our YouTube page as well as sending out links uh, in some email follow-up. Um, you can do see my contact info there. You'll be getting emails from me regardless, so no need to write that down. Uh, and as you see that Calendly link there, that's just an automatic way to schedule 30 minutes uh, with me. Uh, you'll have immediate access to my calendar to see if I'm free. Uh, once again, there will be a link uh, for that in the email follow-up. So real quick, we always like to kind of give a high level overview of who we are at Campango, uh, just in case there are anyone uh, on, the, on the webinar that is not familiar with who we are and what we do. Uh, real quick, we are headquartered in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, however, have offices located in Chicago, New York, Atlanta, uh, London, England, and Port Elizabeth, South Africa. Uh, so we are now actually a global team that's uh, approaching 100 people with well over 100 uh, Salesforce certifications. Uh, and, and those really come into play with our partnership status with Salesforce. We are known as a gold consulting partner. And what that means is that we have to hit certain metrics, uh, including CSAT scores, a uh, number of certified individuals at the consulting level, uh, as well as the number of implementations we do and amount of dollar value of the projects that we bring to Salesforce. But what that really means for us and for you is that we have a vested interest in, from Salesforce uh, to the point where they're even giving us a dedicated person on staff to help ensure our success. So we, we get a lot of support from Salesforce because, because of the work that we do for them and with them. Uh, so it really helps come into play uh, with, with positive CX experiences for our customers in general. First, uh, for those of you who uh, were at Channel Connect, uh, you know the two keynotes that were featured, uh, day one was ScanSource founder and CEO, Mike Bauer. And you know, the things that I really enjoyed from his presentation was just the amount of growth that the IntelliSys uh, channel has seen over the last few years. Uh, he highlighted that ScanSource has invested over $100 million just in the last three years since the acquisition of IntelliSys. And that's mainly focused on ProServe and cloud solution companies. Uh, Campango is one of those acquisitions. Uh, we're happy to be part of the family now, uh, and also RPM Software and Inti. Uh, and as you can see, there's a bit of a, you know, we really are focusing the money on, on the ProServe ecosystem and cloud solution products. Uh, it was hammered home again and again that this is the way that the ecosystem is moving. And while there's still massive space for hardware, uh, it's, it's more and more about, uh, you know, pushing that hardware onto cloud. And the companies that are, are doing that successfully are the ones that are seeing a ton of growth. And just the, the market cap in general, uh, you know, this, when you take all of the, you know, when you consider SD-WAN, cloud solutions, UCAS, CCAS, telephony, there's a 600 billion market cap. And, you know, we're just beginning to scratch the surface. Uh, you know, I think uh, I saw IntelliSys had seen 26% organic revenue growth between it, it, it and its partners. Uh, in the last few years, which is pretty incredible. Uh, and now there's over 150 suppliers within the ecosystem. So just, he really highlighted and hammered home how good of an industry this is to be in right now, how many growth opportunities there are, and how it's not just in one key area. There's, there's room for growth 
for pretty much everyone. Everyone's going to get a seat at the table. Uh, you just have to make sure to capitalize on it and work hard to make sure you're doing the right things to get a piece of that pie. And for Mark Randolph, uh, I got to tell you, Mark Randolph, I'd never heard him speak before. He's one of the co-founders of Netflix. We're all familiar with Reed Hastings probably, but he's kind of the other guy uh, that uh, you know, started one of the most well-known and biggest uh, tech companies in the world. Uh, and and his, his keynote really focused in on uh, one, I one idea really that is that you need lots of ideas. Uh, he hammered home on this fact that you're gonna need a lot of ideas because a lot of them are gonna be bad ideas and that's okay. Cause we really don't truly know if an idea is going to be a good one uh, until we do it. And he focused in on that a lot with the Netflix story. And, and I, I really enjoyed hearing about how him and Reed Hastings, you know, one day they went to the blockbuster offices um, and, and they needed to basically pitch, you know, the Netflix idea to blockbuster because they wanted to try and sell it because they were in such a massive amount of debt. And, and they gave the whole spiel to them and they gave their, their valuation and Blockbuster basically laughed them off because they thought it was a bad idea. And look, that bad idea turned into a multi-billion dollar company that put Blockbuster out of business. So there's the focus in on here is that, you know, success takes lots of ideas and it's because a lot of them are gonna be bad and that's okay. So playing into the whole discussion of, of what we do at Campango and, and striving for CX, you know, you have to ex explore bad ideas with your customers even, and that's okay. And to, to really sit there and hone in on that message of, of it being okay to have the bad ideas is, is something you can definitely address with your end users. So I want to start talking about uh, some of the things that we focused in on on one of our breakout sessions, and that's the value of customer experience. And our, our uh, VP of operations, Dennis Casey, uh, ran this one and CX is a really big passion project for him. Um, so he had a lot of ideas on, on how companies in this ecosystem can, can best uh, leverage CX and, and make sure that they're giving their best value to their customers. Uh, just a, a key stat here, 88% uh, of companies now prioritize CX in their contact centers. Um, and, and that is, is a mind blowing number in my opinion. Um, you know, if you were to take any key aspect of a business, whether it's, you know, revenue growth, cost cutting, um, you know, expansion for CX to have 88% of companies, uh, focused in on that. And if you take some other additional facts, um, Gartner did a study that now more than two thirds of companies are competing solely primarily based on their customer's experience. And that's up from 36% in 2010. So you're, you're seeing almost 100% uh, growth there in less than a decade, which is pretty phenomenal. And you really have to invest in it. 62% uh, of companies now invest uh, in, in order to meet the changing needs of their customers. So while it's, it's an easy conversation uh, to start, because let's face it, it's a huge buzzword these days. Uh, you know, chances are that whether through the IntelliSys channel or other methods of media, um, you know, uh, whether it's social, uh, whether it's uh, subscription media that you have, CX is being talked about a lot these days. And the conversation is easy to start because there's a lot of easy questions that you can ask. Are you currently addressing CX in your organization in any way? If so, how? If not, do you know where to start? Are you measuring CX in any capacity today? If so, how's it going? Have you adjusted your data capture process to drive better CX? Have you inventoried your technology infrastructure to ensure your tools maximize CX? Are you looking to streamline processes and systems to enhance CX? And do you need a CX facilitator to help you keep these moving forward? So these are all basic questions that you can ask your end customers that can start that conversation very easily. And like I mentioned, it's, it's a very big buzzword right now. So chances are your customers have heard a lot about CX in the last year as well. So it's probably something that they're going to be willing to talk about. But then we need to get into more of the meat and potatoes of what that conversation turns into, what that CX discovery for your customers involves. And, and there's a lot of uh, ways to go about this. And our, our VP, Dennis, he has this these four pillars that he likes to focus in on. And that includes company culture, the process and methods, technology and data capture and change management. 
And through looking at those four basic pillars, you can start to look for a lot of early wins because there's some very, very easily discoverable uh, things within, within your customers that can show that they are struggling with CX or that they are kind of floundering with how to start their CX uh, and digital transformation. And some of those things to key in on uh, before we get to these bullet points, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, discovery items that are easy to identify, such as siloed or non-existent data, fragmented or insufficient tools, disconnects in communication between sales department, service department, marketing department, finance department, uh, a lack of concern or care for their customer interactions, and a lack of insight into the customer voice. So there's a lot of small early wins that you can identify if you simply are, are asking these questions of them and identifying opportunities. So where does a customer need staff training, culture reinforcement, change management, systems integration, data capture improvements, modified KPIs, et cetera. These are all other things that we can take into account when we're looking at identifying opportunities where CX is not being met internally or externally. And there's a, a really good opportunity to bring us in for a conversation about that digital transformation, that CX journey based off of uh, CRM. So we need to sit there, we need to ask these questions, the right questions of your customers, and then you review the impact of the actions and modify the plan accordingly. So you take all the feedback from your customer, customers, you analyze that, and based off of your experience and through our help, then you uh, suggest the changes that are needed, you bring us into the conversation. So how does that conversation work? How do you get involved with us? How do we bring Salesforce into the conversation? So this is just a quick little graphic recap of just how the, the relationship works between Campango, uh, the channel, and Salesforce. So like we said, we help identify those CX opportunities, those CRM transformation opportunities. You guys are gauging that customer interest. You're asking those questions. And then you're figuring out the right time with our help to engage us. And we sit there, we get on conversations with you. We, we take a deeper dive into the, the needs and roadblocks that the customer is currently having. And we strategize and do discovery based off of that. We scope out exactly what their needs are, what that's going to entail. And then we bring in Salesforce and we say, okay, these are the licenses and products you're probably looking at. Salesforce is always going to probably try and sell you on as much as possible. We're here to be that buffer to help make sure that Salesforce is only selling uh, either you or your end customer, exactly what they need. And then obviously within this channel, there's over 150 supplier partners, um, whether that's UCAS solutions, whether it's uh, VoIP, uh, whether it's uh, you know, simple messaging apps or SD1, um, internet of things. It, there's a lot, a lot of options, let's face it. And we are there to also help um, be that, that consultant as to what supplier partners uh, are going to be uh, useful in this case. And you guys are also a huge asset uh, for us because you guys live and breathe in this ecosystem every single day. You're going to be very uh, familiar with suppliers and you're going to be able to help uh, know exactly what that customer needs. And then we look at the existing tech stack uh, and, and what they have, whether it's ERPs, whether it's homegrown solutions. Uh, honestly, sometimes you just have people that are on Excel sheets or Google sheets and, and they need to move into a cloud-based uh, 21st century solution. And uh, we like to talk about this because, uh, you know, there's, there's not necessarily a, a deep knowledge outside of the Salesforce ecosystem about the role that implementation partners play. And while Salesforce can be a sort of out of the box solution, it is such a robust platform. And there are so many opportunities to integrate and customize that if you're gonna be paying for Salesforce, because let's face it, it's not the cheapest option out there. Uh, there's a reason for that because it is such a robust, useful tool, but you need to leverage an implementation partner like Campango to provide that customization, that integrations. So like we focused on the previous slide, we're gonna look at the, that existing tech stack. We're gonna look at existing solutions. We're gonna look at solutions they may need to add on. Perhaps it's a, a CCAS solution uh, for a call center that they're integrating with Salesforce. And we're gonna help make that migration, that entire journey, that implementation as seamless as possible. 
And we always like to really hone in on this point. The sooner Campango engages, the better. And what that means is we're obviously going to give you the tools. We want to enable you and educate you as best as possible to, to be able to identify those CRM needs, uh, that, that digital transformation needs for your customers on your own. And once you have done that immediately, even the second conversation you have, we want to be in on that conversation. Obviously, this is your relationship. You're going to be that relationship manager. We're not taking that away from you. We don't want to take that away from you. We're just there to be that Salesforce consultant, that expertise in, in our field to make sure that we are avoiding redundant customer conversations if we're having, uh, you know, if we're making them repeat themselves uh, with calls they had with you. We want to get on early so that we're just getting uh, synced up as quickly as possible. And we can immediately start to have a conversation and really scope out exactly what kind of needs are going to be in play. We want to look at what roadblocks could be. We want to look at possible challenges because we want to head those off as soon as possible because that's going to always result in a smoother implementation and likely a more cost-effective implementation. So uh, to finish up here, we just want to focus quickly on uh, two projects that Campango did that uh, we focused on in one of our sessions at Channel Connect. Um, for those of you that weren't able to make it to that session, we were uh, thankful enough to have uh, our partner, uh, Jeff from Lamb Technologies, uh, sit down with our solutions engineering manager. And I hosted them and basically just had like a nice little conversation and round table, uh, focusing in on what does a project look like with us? How are they identified? Uh, and, and how does it uh, grow? How do, how do you guys maximize the revenue opportunities for that? Um, and I personally loved it because, let's face it, we want relatability with these uh, presentations, with these educational sessions, and what better way to have relatability than to be have a channel partner up there doing the exact same thing you guys are doing every day and giving their viewpoint on how this relationship works. So LAMP Technology is a uh, IntelliSys channel partner, uh, and this engagement started because of uh, Channel Connect. Uh, Scott Bickley, our, our uh, channel manager uh, at the time, he had a conversation with Jeff and it turned into a possible uh, implementation for LAMP technologies themselves. And what ended up happening is we did a paid discovery for them, meaning uh, we, we came in, we took a look at their entire organization, we took a look at exactly what that Salesforce implementation would look like, what products would they need, what kind of data migration would be necessary, what kind of integrations would be necessary. And that's a really quick little project that gives us that perfect outlook into exactly what's the scope of this, what's it gonna cost, what's it gonna take, what's this timeline gonna be. So now at this point, uh, we are looking at the, the opportunities that we have with LAM. We have that paid discovery finished and we have that roadmap in front of us and now it's just all about picking and choosing exactly uh, what is gonna be the right fit for them, what they have the budget for, uh, and then moving on from there. So for right now, while we have not implemented Salesforce yet, uh, this is a really good uh, depiction of, of the whole process, how we can, from pay discovery um, and that initial scoping uh, to figuring out exactly what that's gonna look like. And obviously the next steps with them will be an actual implementation, uh, which can be followed by um, training, uh, admin hours, uh, and so on. Uh, lastly here, uh, one more uh, customer success story that's very relatable. This is one of LAMP Technologies customers. Um, so they do a lot of uh, ceramic molding and uh, work like that. And this one started because uh, Jeff from LAMP Technologies knew how to identify an opportunity. He saw that they had need for CRM functionality and he had that conversation with them. He mentioned that Campango was a partner that had the ability to look into those needs that they had. Um, and we ended up uh, getting in conversations with them. Uh, we ended up doing a sales cloud implementation, an Oracle ERP integration and an Integra integration, which is a, a sales compensation point system that they were using. So this turned out to be, you know, uh, more than just a simple stand-up of the Salesforce organization and just really highlights, uh, you know, the capabilities that we have with integrating and customizing someone's Salesforce organization uh, to their needs. 
So real quick here, um, before we say thank you for joining, we have some questions to address. Um, first of all, I do see a quick one. Will we get a copy of the presentation? Uh, just to reiterate, yep, it'll be posted uh, with the email follow-ups that you get and also uh, through our YouTube channel, uh, which it's easily searchable. You can find Campango on YouTube and we have all of our webinars, all of our presentations uh, posted there. So uh, another question is, what would the smallest customer size be to approach? Uh, and this is a great question because, you know, we get asked a lot, you know, what's your sweet spot? What's your, you know, in the intelligence channel, seats are used a lot. Um, you know, in Salesforce world, they use license count uh, as the moniker. Uh, but really, it's, it's more about the scope of the implementation versus the seats. And I say that because with the robust nature of the Salesforce platform, the numerous products that they uh, offer, it's really about the needs versus the size. Because you could have a five license Salesforce deal that has some complex integrations, has some complex data migration, and they're looking at training and admin hours afterwards. So that can be a, a much larger dollar size project, even than one that's a hundred license deal that might be just a very basic standup. So we generally don't like to look at a minimum seat count or a minimum customer size. Uh, we really like to, to just get into a conversation and start scoping it out and see if we're a good fit. Um, because there's, there's going to be a lot of opportunities also for small deals to grow. Uh, we've had numerous uh, instances where we start off with a very small project, maybe 10, 15, 20 seats. And all of a sudden that grows into phase two, phase three, phase four. And before you know it, a year down the line, we've got 400K in projects. Uh, for implementation that we've done. Uh, so uh, we love the idea of land of expand. So don't look at as a, what's the smallest customer size you're willing to look at. Let's, let's focus on, is there a need? Can Pango, can, can, can Pango help fit that need? And then let's get on a call and discuss. Um, and real quick, that, that leads me into, I just wanna real quick uh, go over the compensation model because we do get asked that a lot too. Um, and, and what's in it, let's face it, at the end of the day, we're all trying to do our job, we're all trying to make money. Uh, and, and what's in it for you guys is, right now, the, we send a 20% a add-on from the implementation cost to IntelliSys, and then based off of the contracts that you guys have worked out, they're sending uh, likely the majority of that to you. So while this may not be monthly reoccurring revenue opportunities like you guys are mostly used to, there are evergreen revenue opportunities there when deals can possibly grow. So even if you have a small client, if there's a, a good outlook for multiple phased approaches, that's also could turn into a very lucrative deal. Uh, real quick, I just wanna make sure uh, if anyone has any further questions uh, before we sign off here. Uh, looks like no, so I just wanna quickly thank everyone uh, for joining today. Uh, if you have any further questions that pop up today, tomorrow, week down the line, please, please, please never hesitate to reach out. Um, you can see my contact info here. Like I said, you will all receive uh, email follow-ups from today. That includes a copy of the presentation. Uh, you'll have, that'll be coming from me directly. So you'll have my information. And there'll also be a link to schedule a 30 minute call uh, directly onto my calendar. So please utilize that if you wanna get into a more in-depth conversation or just have some more questions that you wanna go over that you don't wanna ask now. Otherwise, I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Um, yeah, have a good one guys.